Just kidding, it's not that heavy, but it's pretty hefty now. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the FB Jets F-15 from Global Jet. Uh, we are very, very close to being done on this plane and uh, we're making great progress on it. So thanks guys for tuning in. Thank you for all the support on the channel. If this is your first time here, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and uh, let's get into this plane. Alright guys, last episode we got the nose bolted on is how we finished that episode. So that's where we're continuing. Uh, we basically have that mess to deal with <laughs> still. But now our access to the mess is even worse than it was before. So um, things are going well though. We're, uh, we're progressing nicely. A, uh, I'm not going to bother getting the canopy reinstalled right now because that would limit our access to the mess. We do have the wings to still do as well too so we might do that in this episode but the very first thing we're going to focus on is this stuff so we're going to get as much of this stuff run as possible and we may start installing the servo leads into the receiver assuming chad brings his radio which i think from now on he said he was going to but uh, we basically just need to start working on organizing the front section of this plane and uh, just getting stuff run. So we are very, very close to being done this plane. The biggest step left is gonna be just the um, the wings and also the air cylinders right here as well too. So I may start on that actually right away. And uh, once that's done, then it's just running stuff and basically running lines. So anyways, guys, very excited. All right, so next thing I'll show you guys is how we're gonna install these air rams to secure the canopy in the locked position. Now, these air rams may not be 100% necessary. With our new geometry on here and that uh, linear actuator, there's lots of force on there, but this is just uh, a little bit extra insurance. You don't want this to be opening up when you're uh, you're flying, so. But, uh, so it doesn't need to be, you know, super accurate or anything like that. We just need to have a hole that we go into that prevents the canopy from lifting up. Okay, so all I did was essentially take this air cylinder, get it lined up where we're going to install it. There was no hole there yet. And just use my eyes and drill the hole uh, roughly in the right spot. So now we've got our location for the cylinder or the rod coming through the fuselage. And then all I did was close the canopy and I just put a little paint dot on the canopy so when I closed it I could look through the glass and see in relation to the paint dot where my hole was that my rod was going to come through and then I drilled a hole now I was a little bit too far to the right and moved the hole over a little bit you can kind of see if you look real close a little bit of leftover yellow paint right there but uh, the width doesn't matter on this because we've got our guide pins. What matters is the up and down and just the actual lock mechanism itself. So now with that drilled, I can close this canopy, look through the back side. It helps to shine a flashlight right here. And you can see that the cylinder is actually going to make its way through our guide holes. So I'm just going to repeat that same process on the other side and then we'll get these things glued in place. All right, guys, we have everything mocked up for the front canopy stuff here. So we've got a little bit of air tube section already put on there. We've put a little bit of a point on the grinder onto the actual shaft so there's no uh, holdups when that thing is going in and out. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these in place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the shaft all the way extended. We're gonna have it poking through the hole there. And then what we're gonna do is use some CA and kicker just to get this stuck into the right spot. And then once that's done, we'll put epoxy all around it on the top and the bottom side, and that'll help uh, just solidify everything. Now, if you were to put this on with epoxy, that would probably be fine. You just gotta have a way to hold it there without moving it. So that's the reason for the CA. It doesn't even need to be much, just a couple drops on the front and the back. 
just to make sure that it doesn't move. All right, both sides are installed. That was actually nice and easy. So the CA is holding it in place right now. We put some on the back, some on the front. So now all we'll do is we'll take trusty bent screwdriver, mix up some 20 minute uh, high saw, and we'll just put some on the front or on the top, some on the bottom, and it will be all good. Um, so you don't really don't need a whole lot actually poking into the, uh, the canopy area. We probably could have even reduced that a little bit, but as long as you're going into the canopy hatch itself, that is all you need. All right, we are slowly making some progress here. So the back end, Chad hooked up the rods, the rudders. So those are done, hooked up and installed. And then in the front here, we are making progress with the mess. The mess is getting less messy. So we've got the main supply for the brakes and the canopy hooked up. We've got the power lines for the turbines run. We've got a couple more air lines run there. The front door is hooked up. And we've decided that we are gonna put the receiver right in this area here. So right beside the front gear and it's gonna sit vertically. So we need to glue a plate in there uh, or some blocks just to make it uh, have a nice mounting surface. And all of our servo lines should have enough space to get to that area. Benefit of going there is we've got a little bit better access rather than way down buried in there. And we also have lots of cables and stuff crossing over in the back plate that we put in there before. So, so next thing we're gonna do, I think, is hook up all the lights to the light controller get that stuck out of the way so all you know we'll lose about half of the wires when we do that so that's the next thing we're going to do all right guys making mounts for the receiver so this is going to get mounted on the side of the nose section and we need some standoffs in order to facilitate this mounting to the side so when this sits in there it's sitting like this we've got a little bit it's a little bit closer on the back side than it is the front side so we cut two different heights of spacers. So there's only a couple millimeters difference there, but these two are gonna go on the front portion of the receiver, and these two are gonna go on the back portion, and that's just gonna help it sit more level. So what we're gonna do is we're going to drill the hardwood dowel, screw the hardwood dowel or the receiver into the hardwood dowel, and then put high saw on these, get it in the right position, and stick it in place. All right guys, now with those blocks installed, all we need to do is we just sanded them down to adjust the depth. So now everything is contacting nice and firmly. So what I'll do now is I'll mix up some of the 20 minute high saw, get this stuck in place. We just have to find a way to kind of position it in place so it doesn't move. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow and she should be nice and solid. All right, guys, so everything's glued and stuck down with the receiver. That worked out really, really well. It's extremely solid right now, so that is absolutely awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue on with the mess of stuff. Uh, we've got these um, canopy locks that we need to, uh, to tee up and run those lines. And then once that stuff's done, we are kind of almost done with the fuselage. Um, sort of. We are need to continue on with the wiring portion, but we need the owner's radio here to do that. So we've got a, you know, not a ton left to do in this section. And once we're done this stuff, as far as we can go, the next thing we have to do is the wings. Right there in the Revic wing bags. All right, guys, continuing on, we have to hook up our lines in the front, the air lines for the canopy locks. And somebody brought the radio. So we get to start plugging in some servo leads to the receiver. Maybe, we'll see. But that's what we're working on. Uh, one of the other things I forgot to bring up last night when I was telling you guys, so like maybe 10 seconds ago, was we still need to, to figure out the air brake as well too. So um, we probably won't do that in this video. I don't think, I think the next thing we're gonna focus on is uh, radio programming and getting the uh, servo leads plugged in. All right, as mentioned, guys, we are using the DX18 with this plane. So what we've done is we've gone through. The spectrum wants to give me an IX20. <laughs> game. 
we've gone through and mapped out all of our channels. So we've uh, essentially assigned all these channels the way they're listed here to the radio and we've assigned everything on their appropriate functions as far as switches and sticks and trims and all that stuff goes. So that's all pre-assigned. So that's all assigned. So the last thing you want to do is you would not want to plug that mess of wires in to the receiver and then turn everything on because it's going to go nuts. You're going to have flaps that aren't moving the right direction. Uh, you risk um, wrecking things as well too so just keep that in mind so the way i like to do this is get the radio all programmed and then plug something in one at a time and then program it from that point once you're happy with it you can leave it plugged in but now we've got all the channels assigned to where we can plug stuff into all right guys so we're just plugging stuff into the receiver and so this is what i like to do when we are setting up a plane so we start off with the rudders, we've plugged them in, we've centered them, we've adjusted the ball length so we're mechanically um, as, as essentially centered as we can be. So that's all set up. And then what I'll also do at this, at this point is adjust our travels on stuff as well too. So with this current setup, we get way more travel than we need. So we'll go in there and we can adjust our travel to, uh, to suit. All right, rudders and elevators or vertical stabs and horizontal stabs are complete. So we've set up the travel on the elevators and it was pretty straightforward because of the channel that, that's in there for the servo or the actuating arm to sit in. You can only get so much travel and uh, basically you're required or the, the, the data sheet or manual sheet says get 50 millimeters, which is what we got. So. So on one of the forums, Chad found that the center for the elevator's measured rate in this section here is two inches, which would be 50-ish millimeters. So that's where we've adjusted our center point to, and it seems to be bang on with our travel and everything as well. In the dual rate menu in the radio, we basically have 76 points of travel one way and 76 degrees or points of travel the other way which tells me that this is basically really really close to that zero point so should be a good starting point for the maiden flight but the back end of the plane is all set up all right so we got the front air system all hooked up uh, with the gear and everything so we are ready to test the gear system on this plane. So we just hooked up the pump. We're gonna fill up the main air system to 100 PSI, and then we will see what happens. All right, guys, so just to eliminate some stuff here, we put uh, one of my JR receivers in, and everything works. So, there we go. We just gotta figure out why. And it's probably because of the uh, the additional channels on the spectrum stuff. So gear goes down and doors close. All right, so we've cycled this a whole bunch of times. We're at 37 PSI and the gear is still working. So that's a positive thing. Uh, it's nice to check this and see how low you can go and uh, the gear still works safely. So at this PSI, the doors now are starting to close a little bit slower and not, uh, not close as solidly. So what we'll do is we'll set our fail safe at about 65 PSI and that'll have a nice comfortable window. Don't forget we've got those massive two tanks back here so you could probably conceivably fly for a week and uh, never uh, have to fill up your air. <laughs> Just kidding. We wouldn't want to do that. We check our air every single time. Yeah, the weekend. So we're going to uh, uh, figure out why this isn't working with the uh, Spectrum stuff. All right, guys, gear is successfully working like it should. We are going to put the F-15 on its own legs for the very first time here in North America. The exclusive brought to you by the lighter side of RC. I know this is amazing stuff. Let's put this thing on its wheels. Oh, ready? Oh! Look at that. I don't know. She 
I don't think she'll need a whole lot of nose weight. You don't think so? I don't think so. All right, so pretty cool stuff. It's kind of neat to see this thing on its wheels for the first time. Um, I was just joking the other day about how small that front wheel looks and the uh, the scale or the, the actual F15, the, the front wheel looks hilariously small. So looks really, really good. Very, very impressive. So you can see the angle of the wheels there now for the first time, I guess properly, not upside down. So they're a little bit um, cambered out, I think is the right term. Um, when you look at the the actual full scale one, they do that as well too. So those are some of the details that I guess they've captured on this plane. All right, so next thing we're moving on to is the air brake and then the wings. So that's our next goals. And the one struggle we have is the length of the new actuator. So that's going to be our only trick is trying to get that all set up. You can see there that the actuator fully closed is almost the same length as the other actuator fully open. So what that means is we need to do a little bit of modification in this area. And we also need to, uh, we're probably gonna end up getting more travel out of the air brake up about something like that with that new actuator. But we're gonna have to drop this end of the actuator into the airframe and build a new mount. So that's kind of what we're working on now. And I'm not exactly sure yet how we're gonna tackle this, but we are going to figure it out. All right, so step number one on this thing, we were just kind of taking a look at it and doing some math and figuring out and stuff. And the existing cylinder sits in there kind of like that and fully closed. That's roughly where the ball joint is. So we do have a bit more movement there. Now the actuator itself is a little bit wider than the channel. This end does fit in that portion, or at least I measured it and it should fit. Yep, so that part's good. Um, we just need to try and make this all work. So step number one, we're gonna grind this section out with the Dremel, that section out. We will have to open up this back section a little bit and the entire channel first, just because we're not much, but we're just a little bit too narrow on the opening. So we're gonna go and do all that uh, as a first step. Then we'll, we will see how this fits, how our geometry works out and what we need to do going forward. All right, so we're just messing around with the angles and stuff here. So what we've done is we've slotted this enough so the actuator can get in there it's hooked up to the actual air brake right now, and we're just playing around with angles and stuff. So there's quite a, quite a bit of stuff going on here. So the brace itself, the cross brace in the airframe, sits, the rear part of the brace sits right here on these black marks. And it's gonna be really close to sitting against this former work here. So essentially right where the, the Allen key uh, rod is. Now what we want to do to get more travel is we want to take this actuator and actually move it forward. You can see that it's extended quite a bit right now. So we want to get this black um, motor portion sitting closer forward, but we've got to also keep it as tight to the skin as possible. And as long as we do that, we should, shouldn't have any issues with clearance and that should hopefully work out okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to take away some more of this wood material so the black motor portion can actually sit closer to this area. So the front of it sitting about here, roughly. All right, so we've managed to open up all the wood structure here and that looks like it's going to work good. So when you're doing something like this, highly suggest baby steps, don't just go crazy. Uh, so next thing we're gonna have to do is this little section here is indented towards you, the camera. So we're gonna take this material out here where my Sharpie marks are, which is gonna drop the actuator down, hopefully allowing clearance for the cross brace. And then the only other thing we'll have to do possibly on extension is get rid of some of this material because as that actuator goes up, it's gonna need space to clear. So. Um, that's the next thing we're doing is we're going to open up this section. Cut the umbilical cord, throw the air cylinder in the garbage, it's too late. Okay, so 
that's done. Now we need to extend our opening because when this thing's fully extended, um, it sits well above. So if you can imagine this is the, the top of the table is the canopy or the hatch, it sits kind of like this. And we need to get that actuator moved as close as possible to the cover. In order to do that, this black actuator needs to be able to go up into that position. So we do have to Dremel all this section out. We've kept it as minimum as possible. So when this is all lined up, this front line is the body itself and the back line, which we haven't drawn yet, but you can see the dots there. That's the uh, center line of the, the pivot point or mounting point. All right, guys, I think we got everything solved here. Chad's a genius, came up with a complete idea all by himself. He is a miracle worker. I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding, right? I don't know. I try to help. <laughs> Best I can. <laughs> okay, so what we came up with, we've got the space cut there on the skin for the actuator. So the actuator has plenty of room to come through. Uh, right now it's sitting almost all the way closed. There's probably about half an inch, uh, about 10 to 12 millimeters of closure still available. We want to keep that just so we don't run out. Um, we're using the air cylinder here as the top of the top rear portion of the cross brace. And what we're going to do to make this all work is now we want to build our support. So this is down towards the internal of the airplane or up off the skin like that. So we just got it all lined up, took a measurement. So from our skin to the center of the hole were 20 millimeters. So what we wanna do now is build our structure that's gonna support this. And uh, that's pretty much it. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Seriously. So we're gonna work on this. These Accutronics um, units come with, uh, as I've talked about previously, they come with a whole bunch of different mounting options, which is nice. So I think we may end up using this uh, metal piece on top of a wood piece to get our right spacing and everything, but that's uh, a bunch of the hardware that we can use to mount it. All right, guys, here's the contraption that we came up with. So we used the carbon laminated plywood that came with the kit, and we cut two of these pieces. The dimensions and design, I guess, is, is kind of right there. And so that's what we came up with. That's what we created. And then the actual mounting piece and everything is keyed there on both sides. There we go. And then so the actuator will bolt right to the back piece here. And so the whole theory behind this is now when this is installed like that, all the force uh, pushing, that's gonna be one of the biggest forces on this air brake. Uh, that's all taken up by the slots, the extra overlap pieces or the extension pieces, and then of course all the glue that's going to hold this thing together. So it should be incredibly rigid. But you think about that air brake sticking up, uh, you have got a mass of surface sticking up. That's a, a lot of force in this area, so it's got to be uh, engineered and reinforced uh, quite well. So last step tonight is we're going to get this stuff glued up. So all we're going to do is we're going to just roughen up the carbon fiber pieces that actually sit against the existing structure because the carbon's quite smooth. The rest of it, we're pretty much gluing the, the wooden surface itself. And we'll do a little bit of roughening up where the, uh, the slots uh, interlock with each other. Get this all glued clamped in place and we will let it cure till tomorrow. All right, there she is glued in place. We've got everything set. It's measured out properly. We've got it clamped in place and that is going to work absolutely awesome. That's not going anywhere. When that cures, it's going to be incredibly rigid. Um, I think everything's gonna work out in the plane because we've got everything measured here. This piece that protrudes from the hatch cover will sit right over the ent or the, the intake duct that's painted gray, so we should have plenty of room. And if not, we'll just do a little bit of grindy grindy, but it should work out good. And last thing we'll do is take our rubbing alcohol container, 
put it on there. We're gonna let that cure till tomorrow. All right, guys, it is the next night and we're gonna check out how everything worked out here on our mounting system. It looks phenomenal. It's insanely stiff and uh, I don't need those clamps on there anymore. So that worked out really, really well. That's exactly what we were looking for. So next thing to do is we are gonna get this mounted on the plate. So one of the key things with all of this is we need to make sure that we've got enough clearance for this to all work. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is I'm gonna get this installed on the plane and then we'll actually have sort of have access to this through the top hatch and maybe we can see how much space we've got there so all right guys so with this installed on the plane i was able to actually take a measurement with my calipers and just having the little piece stick out the bottom so from that edge of the skin down to the the beam the cross beam it's exactly 20 millimeters actually no sorry it was um 19 millimeters so which basically means that when this is hooked up, we need to be no further out than these cross pieces. So we know that, we've confirmed it. So next thing we're gonna do is we're going to mark out the center point for the mount, and we're gonna get that mount bolted up, and then we can get our actuator bolted onto the mount, and then we can try this thing out and see how it works. All right, guys, so the mechanics of this works great. Uh, really happy with it. I did try it with a life battery, so like six-ish volts, and it works okay. It doesn't have a ton of power, so if you provide some resistance here um, while it's extending, it uh, does struggle a little bit. So I put a LiPo on there. It's actually a lithium ion, but it's essentially 8.4 volts, as you can see on my radio there. So I'll show you what happens with that battery. So works nicely. And this time I'll extend it and I'll put my hand on it just so you can see what, uh, what it looks like. So I'm not putting tons of force, but I was pushing down probably with, uh, with a couple pounds of force. But the uh, mechanics of that is awesome. That worked out great. All right, guys, that is the end of this episode. Happy that we got the air brake all sorted out and we are progressing nicely. There's some jokers laughing behind me. <laughs> uh, it was a good episode and I think we got a, a ton accomplished. The next one is probably gonna be the last one for the F-15 build. You can see in the background there, we are starting on the wings. That's the last big step. We may be maidening it this weekend, depending on how things work out. And we've got the radio programming to finish, which isn't much of anything. And then the C of G in the next episode as well too. So thanks guys for tuning in. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that like button down below, hit the subscribe button. If you have lost your way and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, something must be wrong with you. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.